such an honor for me to be invited here this afternoon. And uh, even without the benefit of a PowerPoint presentation, which I do not have right now, but what I did bring with me is a proposal that we made quite recently for somebody who is in Congress and wants to run for senator. And this will give an idea of the things that we offer and what we can do for somebody who wants to run for higher office. I think you've had your fill about the PR aspects of those running for president next year. I was interviewed by Jessica Soho last Friday, and the question was, what do you, to what do you attribute the rise of Senator Grace Poe and the downfall of VP Binay in, in the latest surveys? Very obviously, and I think all of you know this, the fact that VP Binay has spokespersons who say the wrong things at the right time. <laughs> I mean, here is Senator Poe, a lady, articulate. She speaks for herself. She does not have spokespersons. So when she talks, you get the impression it comes from the heart. It's not a, a job made by a spokesperson who carefully weighs his words. Unfortunately for VP Binay, the two guys who speak for him, these are good friends of mine, but they're not simpatico. Unlike Senator Poe, it's very simpatica. Your heart goes out for her. Now, how can your heart go out for Toby Chanko and J.B. Bautista? I mean, I love these guys, but <laughs> there is a, an ocean of difference between those two guys and Senator Grace. And then what they say, again, made Senator Grace lovable even more by saying that she's not fit to run, she's an alien, in fact, and she is a foundling, pulut lang, etc., whatever. So everybody's heart goes up to her. And this has helped her. Now, do you think they learned their lesson? No. Would you believe in today's papers, in last night's news, you have the daughter of VP Binay saying that his resignation was long due, etc., from the cabinet, no? But then she is asked the question, are you ref when you say the VP's uh, enemies in the cabinet, would you include Senator, I mean, Secretary Mar Rojas? And what does she say? Who is that? I mean, does that endear her camp? Does that endear her father to the people? It's arrogante, diba? Uh, I don't know. I think these guys missed out on PR 101. <laughs> At any rate, people say PR means press releases. Press releases is just one tiny aspect of PR. As a matter of fact, it's the most obvious one. Um, People say you want to go into PR, make sure marunong ka sumulat ng press releases and that you know the people to whom you're going to send the press releases to ensure that these are published or aired on radio or television and printed in, in uh, the print media. But no, PR also means perception and reality, especially with, when it comes to politicians. Politicians carry with them always the public's perception. And then what is the reality? If the perception about them is good and the reality is bad, we have to hide that bad reality. Or get your client to, hey, shape up so that your, the reality matches the perception of people about you. They think you're good when in fact you're a rotten apple. Another one. PR stands for performance and recognition, especially for public servants who are already serving the public. If their performance is good, there must be recognition for it. If your performance is fantastic and there is no recognition, nobody knows it except you and your staff 
and your family and friends. Where will you be? This guy who asked us to help him, he is a fantastic doer in Congress. He has a lot of bills introduced and which have been passed. He is a silent worker, so silent that nobody knows what he's been doing. And he wants to run for senator all over the country when in his own district the people don't know that he is such a very good worker, conscientious, straight, does not dip into public funds, and he has a lot of bills passed, but nobody knows about it. That's why performance must be given recognition. That is PR for you. Let's talk about the senatorial race. Right now, it's up for grabs. From each established political party, you're gonna have their own set of candidates, and there are plenty of them. So for one to stand out, you will need help from guys like us, from those involved in PR. My personal uh, experience in this matter dates all the way back to the time of Marcos. Yes, I am that old. Um, imagine 1965, and I was already involved in the political campaign, in the public relations and advertising campaign of then Marcos. It was easy for Marcos at that time to shine because he was brilliant, um, he was charming, he spoke very articulate, and um, it was so easy to sell him. We came up, our team came up with very simple, stop map, that's Makapagal, stop map, go Marcos. And to this day, Marcos loyalists still use this sign, V for Marcos which of course we just copied from, who used this button? Eisenhower was it? Oh, wh whoever, you guys are not that old. <laughs> anyway, Stop Mac, Go Marcos. I personally made some jingles uh, based on Stop Mac, Go Marcos. And then, well, by 1969, I was disillusioned, disappointed with the Marcos administration. So I switched sides already until 1983, when um, Ninoy Aquino was assassinated, and that turned the tide as far as my political leanings were concerned. And so I got involved in the campaign of uh, then housewife Cory Aquino. The Marcos camp made the terrible mistake of painting Cory Aquino. What can she do? Babae lang yan. She's, the, she's just a woman. What can she do? Can she run a country? She's just a woman, which was a stupid thing to do. Okay? It, it was a terrible mistake on their part. So you've got all the women in the Philippines, practically all of the women in the Philippines saying, she just insulted us. It was so easy for us to work on that. And of course, it was so easy to throw all the issues against Marcos at that time. And so, um, we came up with Tamana, Sobrana, Palitana. And that was our battle cry for Marcos against Marcos. Enough of this. Too much of this. Let's change this already. Tamana, Sobrana, Palitana. And then in 1992, ERAP decided for a stab at the presidency initially and then he slid down to running for vice president. So I was involved in the campaign of Arab, who was my, my classmate at the Ateneo. Uh, up to second year high school when he, when he got kicked out for disciplinary measures, not for academic. Do not believe the canard that Arab does not speak English. He's from the Ateneo, he speaks good English, not as good as me. But, and I keep teasing him about that. When Arab ran, it was so easy to sell him initially, because he had the C and D group, the Masa, to his side. Why? Because of his campaign slogans since he started his political career. Era para sa Mahira. It's so easy, three words, rhymes. Everybody understands what it means. However, the ANB had reservations about him. They said, this guy can't even speak straight English. He's got nothing here. And there was this reluctance. Um, what's this guy gonna do when he sits uh, in Balacanang? 
he cannot even represent the country in meetings with uh, other uh, officials from other countries. And so we figured let's come up with something and use a disadvantage to our advantage. That, that's when I thought of coming up with eruptions. Y you, you're old enough to know. OK. Eruptions is the book of jokes about Arab. Because at that time, there were already jokes about Arabs' English. But these were rehashed Ricky Belmonte and Alma Moreno jokes. And so we figured, hey, let's make these Arab jokes. Came up with a book called Eruptions. And it was a fantastic success. So that everybody, from the people in Forbes Park to the people in Tondo, were cracking Arab jokes. He was on everybody's lips. And then, because of these Arab jokes, he got invited to so many uh, gatherings. And he'd crack his own jokes. And then when he'd start speaking in English, they would be pleasantly surprised. Hindi naman pala bobo, marun pala mag English eh. So we turned a perceived um, fault into an advantage. And it was smooth sailing for Arab when he ran for president in 1998. Arab para sa mahirap did it for him. And will still do it for him as it did when he ran for mayor of Manila. So 1998. By 1994, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo was the new president. And by that time, I was already tapped to help in the PR of uh, President Arroyo. So I've been involved in the campaigns of two male presidents and the two female presidents who replaced them, making me the, one of the top balimbings in town. <laughs> Please translate what balimbing is. <laughs> OK, uh, let me get back to this senatorial race and what we can do for this very industrious congressman who wants to run for the Senate. This is what we told him. These are some of the problems that you face right now. Number one, lack of national exposure, which is understandable mainly because you have not been interviewed on radio or television. Very few people have seen you. If they see you, it's just on an occasional um, interview, one, two minutes, at the most three minutes. And then, of course, your exposure is limited to the district that you represent. And then you don't have a political campaign organization. It's national in scope. What you've got right now is a barangay thing. You know, it, it's, a, it's a tiny thing, tiny organization. But when you run for senator, you have to have representatives, agents, people who will sell you all over the country. I'm, I'm referring to this particular candidate for senator. He belongs to the upper class. Okay, he is not identified with a D and E. A and B know him, know of him, um, A, B and C, positive. But as far as D and E, where majority of the voters come from, he is hardly known. Because of that, he will have funding requirements. He will need donors, but donors will not make out a check for somebody whom they feel is not going to make it or does not even have a good chance of winning, of coming out in the winning column. What do we want to achieve for the candidate? What are the objectives of campaign that we will draw up? First, the objectives. Increase, increase public awareness and establish facial recognition in the national level, particularly among the voters. Generate public appreciation by spotlighting your past and present achievements in various projects that are pro-people. Establish and maintain goodwill among press people. Attract donors to the campaign, definitely. And convince voters that the candidate is a highly competent and winnable person. That is important because voters will not go for somebody whom they perceive to have no chance of winning. Kinakailangan llamado, hindi dehado. Now, the communication spectrum. We go through, the candidate goes through all these stages. Number one, 
and awareness, the zero level in the communications process where the candidate is completely or virtually unknown to the public or to, to the target audience. Awareness as against unawareness. The stage where the public acquires definite information about the candidate and the position he or she is running for. Third, comprehension. Here, the candidate takes a more concrete, more definable character. People acquire a familiarity with an understanding of his or her personal and family background, qualifications, experiences, values, track record, beliefs, and vision. This is what takes time. Creating awareness is easy. Scheduling for interviews uh, on radio, television, print. Have him go around, let him be invited by di different organizations. It's easy to create awareness, but knowing exactly what this guy stands for, what his track record is, what he has done, for the benefit of the voters, that is the primary important thing for the voters. What can you do for me? What have you done for me? Number four, we need to create conviction. This is a stage where people become convinced of the benefits or advantages of electing or voting and supporting the candidate. To the undecided voters, this stage occurs in the last few days of the campaign period, when the great majority of the voters have already made up their mind on who to vote for. And then finally, action. The final stage in the communications process where the qualified voters are willing and able to vote and actually go to the polling precincts and write down the names of the candidate and even support and campaign for that candidate. That's where the action comes in. You would have been very successful. This is the same kind of proposal to, we gave to three candidates for, who ran for senator in the 2010 elections. Two out of three of those that we handled made it. The third one, he started off as number three, slid to number five, number nine, wound up number 14. Was it our fault? No. It was circumstances beyond our control. His association drove his numbers down through no fault of his, but association with an issue that we could not control. It was a crisis stage, but when you're in the middle of a campaign, of an election campaign, and you, are, you find yourself enmeshed in a controversial topic, it is difficult to get out of that spot. So sadly, our man failed to make it. He wound up number 14 from a high of nine, number three at the start of the, of the campaign period. Demographic consideration, principally those belonging to classes C, D, and E of the economic, socioeconomic uh, strata who constitute the greater mass of the voting population. You need to touch base with the following sectors also. Government sector, not so much administration, who may be your opponent, but principally teachers, members of the military, the biggest groups in the bureaucracy, these two. They have a combined total of roughly 0.8 million. Teachers numbered almost 450,000 in 2004, and now estimated to be more than 500,000. Remember, they not only vote, they also help in counting the ballots. So you gotta reach out to these 500,000 teachers all over the country. The latest figure on the armed forces of the Philippines strength stood at 155,000 in the active service and with the latest addition of rookies, 150,000 for the Philippine National Police. And then the leaders of the country's local government units to the officials of the 1,634 cities and municipalities and more than 42,000 barangays. The private sector, the press, the church, religious and civic organizations, the women's sector, senior citizens, young people. There are more young voters now than middle and seniors. The business community, not only as employers of a large number of people, but also as possible donors to the campaign. And labor, particularly contractual workers, 
in industrial, commercial, and business establishments, those in the transport industry. A friend of mine who wanted to run for Congress, and he made it. Initially, he said he would file a bill that would make it unlawful for uh, temporary workers, for companies to hire casual employees that before six months are over, they get rid of them and replace them with new ones. I think on paper, that's fantastic. But he will not get the support, definitely, of the employers. He will not get the support of the Henry C's, the Tans, if he proceeds with that. I mean, you've got to be practical. Contractual workers will love you, but uh, you're not going to get financial support, definitely, from the business sector. Campaign strategy. This is a standard that we do for all of our clients. We have to position the candidate in a positive manner, stressing his main qualifications and selling points. Every campaign time, practically all the candidates mouth the same general uh, lines. I am for the poor. I am against criminality. I am for this and that. Yes, gas gas na gas gas na, yung mga linya. So you have to put a creative twist to it. Concerning com communications, we usually cut this down into three phases, especially now. Phase one covers certain period and all geared towards filing of candidacy. Because everything depends between now and the filing of candidacy in October. If you start moving up in the ratings, survey ratings, then you have a chance. You better file your candidacy. If not, I mean, why file? Why run at all? So everything is geared towards creating awareness for you and acceptance and definitely pushing up your ratings in the surveys. Phase two, when you've decided to run already and you've filed, then we up the ante. As far as publicity is concerned, you have to fight for space and airtime among all the other candidates. There will be at least 30 candidates, at least 30 candidates for senator vying for space in releases in the newspapers, vying for attention and mention by columnists and commentators on radio and television, vying for time to be interviewed on television and radio. And then most of all, let's not forget social, the power of social media these days. Practically mm, free, except that you gotta hire people to tend to the internet and to uh, taking care of your social media uh, requirements. Speeches get their attention right away at the very start and then do not drag it. The best speech can be made in only five minutes, especially on the campaign trail. Three minutes is fantastic. Five minutes is okay. Beyond five minutes is OA. People will start talking to each other already. They'll get restless unless you are such a fantastic, bombastic speaker. We also prepare the speeches of our, of our clients. What do we do for the client? Number one, we formulate the campaign platform. We study everything, his background. Uh, this is what we've been doing for the past week. Tomorrow we will present to him the following, the campaign platform, listing the communications aspect of publicity, press relations, and advertising. We also include crisis management. You find yourself in trouble, then we will find a way for you to get out of it, to cover it, or to dilute the effect, the negative effect, or transfer it to somebody else. We also are involved in political strategizing, and of course we, we work hand in hand with the, with the campaign team of the candidate. Issues management, we take care of this, we hope to handle at least, again, three candidates for senator, one candidate for president and vice president, and a number of governors, congressmen, and mayors. It is a challenge for us always. And sometimes we feel, hey, have we exhausted our creative energy? Because Every election time, it's the same thing over and over again, except they represent different people already. But somehow the creative juices flow 
when politics comes in. And we're very happy about this. We always look at what some of the candidates right now are doing, what they're doing wrong, what they do not do, what they should do. And I guess you have your own opinions about it. And I'll I'd gladly share these things with you. If you have questions, comments, let's hear them, please. Thank you.